Well, welcome to this week's Let's Talk Simple Truths. I am super excited to introduce you to my guest, um, Jenny Randall. She's like backstage. I can see her little face down there. And um, I'm going to bring her on in a minute. And she is... I think I called her a humor evangelist. She is like the, the most funniest person I know. That's really bad grammar, but she gets bad grammar too. So um, I just, I want to introduce the whole world to my friend, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hey, thanks this for having world. me. World. Hello world. Meet Jenny. Yeah. yeah. Great <laughs> to meet the world. I'm excited about this. <laughs> this is so fun. So Jenny, I think one of the most interesting things about you and I and our friendship is we lived in the same town at different times. It blows my mind. I know. <laughs> it's totally crazy. Yeah. And we did not know each other, obviously. Um, we met how many years after you left town? I left in 2007. Okay. And okay. So maybe 10 years later. Nine or 10 no, years later. Yeah. Probably. 2016, yeah. we met. So when yeah. did you move into that little town? Um, we moved, let's see, my son. Oh, gosh, you asked me to do math. This is like really hard. Um, 2011-ish. You moved say. into Casanova in 2011? Yeah, 2011, 2012. Um, but I grew up uh, outside of, in Liverpool, which is a town in Syracuse. Well, yeah. yeah. So that's where my cousins are. Like, Yeah, so great. <laughs> <laughs> Our great. lives are all like entangled in different years. You know, it's like that movie, um, that movie with Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock where they're like in different times and... They send letters to each other. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I don't know what movie that is. But at first I thought you were talking about speed and I was like, oh, oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a bus driver. What? Oh. Okay. So we met at Lisa Turkhurst conference. She speaks, but we didn't really meet there. We met online because yep. you dropped this bomb about how you were from Casanova in New York. And I was like, no. What? Yeah, the community, the She Speaks community had a private Facebook group and we we're all in there hanging out. And I don't remember what the question is, but we were just sharing where we're from and we connected because of it. And yeah, it was awesome. It's awesome. It was. I'm glad I know you. I'm glad God hooked us up. <laughs> well, then, then we started talking and you and I are both talkers. So that was like no problem at all. <laughs> and then I decided to do this crazy thing and host a hundred woman conference. Awesome. Yeah. So if you were at the come alive conference and you are watching this oh interview, my gosh. say I hi, you know, guys, we miss you. Yes. If you were there, I need you to give me a high five or a thumbs up or something in the comments. I need to go over and open my comments. Um, Jenny, you can share this stream <clears throat> if you want to. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Um, I'm not and, texting you guys. I'm pulling it up on my phone. There you go. <laughs> awesome. That conference. Savannah so Jones fun. was there. Savannah, and you have gone on to do some amazing things. She was there. So I, I have to say, Savannah and whoever else is listening that was at the Come Alive conference. Do you remember my most embarrassing moment? I don't know if it was your most embarrassing. I would say it was your most liber liberating moment. Most liberating moment. Yes. So for those of you who were not there, Jenny opened up her um, talk <clears throat> with a creative challenge because Jenny is a creative and she's amazing. And she challenged me <laughs> to do a 30 second rap about pizza. <laughs> no, it was supposed to be about creativity, about creativity, but you weaved pizza in it, which I loved because I love pizza. And yeah, it was fantastic. But you ended up yeah. walking off the stage at some point. <laughs> 
Well, I did. And yes, Savannah, it was my rap. And it was, I, I still have that video clip. So for those of you that weren't there, I did a very short rap about pizza. But the woman that came on after me, she has a rhythm and she understands rap music. And she did this thing that was like a drop the mic moment. And I was so embarrassed. <laughs> It was like a spoken word. Like you would have thought she produced it for like months and like she just got up and we told her the topic and she nailed it. And yeah. And and, and that's I when you walked off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I love, Anne? Because you know, I think we're all called to be creatives at in different levels and however that comes across in our talents and abilities. And you, the sign of a person that understands that, that understands their God-given creativity, there's no, like, they they know how to take risk, even if there's failure involved. Not saying you failed, because I don't think you failed because you showed up and you did it. And I that's why I love that moment so much. And I feel like everybody that was watching that moment just loved it because, me, my personality, I would shrink back and not do it. I'd be like, I'm not, I'm not going to, you're asking me to do what? No, but you were like, I'm here for it and I'm going to do it. And I, I love it so much and I love you for it. So thank you. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I see Savannah. Yeah. It was LA Holtz <laughs> and um, Savannah, I hope you tagged her in that because that was probably the funniest moment. Do you so want to read, do you want to do your rap right now? I'll give you a topic. You're going to do like this thing moment. again? I mean, do you want to? Oh, <laughs> let's have okay. a, let's have a moment for you. I okay. I said not for me. Um, all right. Why don't you rap about quarantine? Are you about guys stuck? What? Are you guys stuck in the house? Being stuck in the house under quarantine? Yes. You must have some rhymes about it or something. Okay. I can't believe you're doing this to me a second time. Okay. Just I'm give me a moment. Mm -hmm. It's about quarantine. Yeah. I got nothing. <laughs> I think you've spoken for all of America in that one line right there. We've all got nothing. This is what it is. It is what it is. Loved it. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna move right along. I, I ha, you know I need to work on that. My, I'm losing my my mojo, my spontaneity mojo. <laughs> no, I loved it. All I could come up with is quarantine. You make me mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be mean. Truth though, truth. You're saying I feel it. It's hard being in the house all day well okay extrovert or introvert oh i'm an introvert so you you're in your happy place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm thriving my husband questions my abilities sometimes um because the kids are here making noises and i'll be like can you guys put your headphones on can you guys Ugh. there's a lot of noises happening it's a lot you're an extrovert i take it yeah. I actually Different sit struggles. pretty much in the middle, you know, mm -hmm. but um, my extrovert is dying right now. Oh, it's oh. not pretty. <laughs> well, I'm glad we get to hang out right now. So. Yes, we do. Yeah. So we should talk about something. Okay. Sure. So world Jenny Randall is um, the ministry founder of freedom creatives and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, um, an army of people fighting to unlock the creativity in all of God's children. Amen. Amen, my friend. Yes. And wait for it. <laughs> well, I know you're an author and a speaker, but you, you did something else. Are we talking about yellow chair creatives or? Uh, whatever you want to talk about, Lee, you, uh, we don't have to, I'm kind of more focused on the ministry work at this time. Okay. So we'll just stay focused on that. So she is, um, the founder of freedom creatives. And I know I kind of put that crudely, but 
really that's your passion is to unlock the creativity in all of God's people, right? Yeah, creativity. Um, I also help leaders and church leaders and pastors. And, you know, all, I believe we're all meant to create, be creative. And Yellow Chair Creatives is my marketing. So I have a marketing company with my husband. Um, for those of you that are like, what is that? That's that side of our life. And um, I've recently started delegating more, which is a task in itself. Um, so I can focus on speaking and writing and and equipping. We try to create biblical resources that equip people to step not only into their creativity, but their purpose and their identity as well. So it's pretty fun stuff. Well, and as you can tell with me, Jenny, that is no easy task. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, like you and I have talked over the years, and I think we both agree that people have a, a creative place. Yeah. But it m probably doesn't look like anybody else's creativity. Like I found my creative flow in, and it wasn't in fine arts and it wasn't in worship arts. Right. Um, because if you think I can't rap, you really don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> but, I, but I have a creative flow in creating environments for people to um, not only connect with each other, but to connect with Jesus, to find that place of inner healing and, um, and, and I just, I flow really well with that. And that's kind of my creative flow. But it took me a while to understand that it is it is creative, even though it's not an art per se. Yeah, I think we, a lot of times we put this label on creativity, like it's painting, it looks like this, it has to look like that. And I think we need to think of it more holistically, like it is event uh, production. And it is even the mathematical even the mathematical ones, which I cannot comprehend, but they have a creative mind in their own way. I mean, they're engineering and they're building. Um, and I, I think, yeah, we have to care. So I like to say the definition of creativity is the act of making stuff. So you mm -hmm. can apply that to, okay, what am I making? And then like run in that lane. I feel like we're in a season. I was praying about this a couple of weeks ago and I felt like God was showing me that the creatives are in a season of, um, some are running in the wrong lane. And I feel like there he's specifically put people in a season of rest and like just creating just because it's an act of worship and it's fun and they can connect with him and they're more in a season of rest. And I feel like there's other creatives that are in season of inspiration where they're creating to literally encourage and inspire people. And then I feel like there's a third group of creatives that are in a season of, of education, whether it's teaching or like educating and in, in biblical concept, whatever that is. And I felt like this, this season we're in of COVID-19, staying in our homes, maybe having extra time, it's pushed a lot of creatives into a different season and they've been trying to like show up in the wrong place. And I really felt this conviction, like God was saying, stay in the lane I put you in, in this season. And for a lot of people, if I can encourage anybody today, it's just to stay in the lane. I think a lot of people that God's called a lot of people to be in a season of rest and to creating just because it's special for them mm -hmm. together and it's an act of worship and it's something that um they get they get intimate and get to know jesus better through it but they've been showing up as a as an output as like a content creator educator or an inspirational person and and god's been telling them hey like reel it in stay in your lane don't it's not time to perform and I think there's this personal time we can have of creating and and then there's a public time of creating, right? So I, I don't know, I've been praying into that and processing through that and sharing that with people. And I think it's um, it's an interesting season, that's for sure. <laughs> it, it is an interesting season. I did an interview um, a week or so, two ago maybe, and we were talking about how the season is a lot like driving through a tunnel and you really, you have to keep going. Like you have yeah. to keep moving. You have to keep doing something because just like when you're driving through a tunnel, if you stop, you're going to cause some, you're going to, you're going to cause some crashes. You're going to yeah, get run good. over. You know, you, you have to keep going and you can't go backwards because everybody behind you is, is moving forward. Yeah. And like you said, you have to stay in your lane. I love what you, you said about, um, and, and, and I'm going to paraphrase it. So correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> correct me if I've mutilated it. Um, I feel like for, for me and a lot of people in my life, 
this season is a season for making your relationship with God the end, not mm -hmm. the means to another creative. Like as a right. writer, you know, as a writer and someone who, who creates content, a lot of times I will sit with the Lord before I start to create. Well, when that trickles over into my quiet time, I've lost the purpose of my communion with the Lord. And I feel like because we have this season, we have a greater opportunity for more communion with the Lord. Yeah. And just being, just yeah. being with him, which is which is the end of all the means that we do. What's the point of creating if it isn't to create something that's going to lead us into the presence of the Lord? Yeah. Is that what you were saying? That's good. Yeah, I feel like that's one of one of definitely one of the lanes God is positioning people for. And yeah. I, and I feel like people that he specifically <clears throat> I think we should all be in that personal lane. Like we should all ride in it. Um but I feel like he's put people there specifically and they're trying to be public about stuff when he's like, no, I've called you to rest. I've called you to like worship me in this time. Like you're not performing now, like you're not performing. Um, and then there are people that he is calling to lead and educate and inspire people in this time too. But, but it does come from that private intimate time in his presence and worshiping him and just getting to know his character better. My goodness. If people miss out on that in this season, like I'm going to cancel everyone's Netflix, Netflix subscription because come on, like it's beautiful. It can be really beautiful and meaningful. So that's an issue. I, I really think it's an issue. And sometimes I can see it. Um, and I know Mindy's on and, and Mindy is a, a writer. And Hi, Mindy. And Claudine is here. I mean, there are some really amazing people who are, are watching right now. And, awesome. and I, I just want to know if you all feel that same sense. Like sometimes when the Lord speaks a word to us, what we want to do is share it. Yeah. You know, and so we go to our Instagram feed or we go to Facebook and we create the little graphic and 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 we go to share it. And what I heard you just say is it's it's not a word to be shared now. It's a word for me now. It's not, it's not always. So that's why I feel like we have to ask the Lord, what lane have you put mm -hmm. me in? And I think oftentimes for myself, I'll find myself hitting publish before I even say, God, can I share this? Or was this just something for me? So I think we have to have that middle ground of like getting, get being in our private time, getting a word and then saying, okay, and this is true, not even in our own creative adventures, but if you're praying for somebody and you feel like you have a word from the Lord, like, is this for right now? Or am I holding on to this? Yeah. for later or is it just for me and you god um yeah so I, I don't i don't think everybody's called to just be in a private restful season i think we do need the educators and the encouragers in the oh, creative yeah. space yeah. um but i definitely think because people have found themselves with more time they're like they just assume oh well everyone else is doing xyz why don't i just do that too mm -hmm. but god's calling them to rest and just to, to get to know him even more intimate. And I think that's so beautiful. So I, if I can encourage anybody, just like ask God what season you're in, you know, because he'll show you. Well, in every day, like when he gives you that word that day, like, do you want me to share this? I mean, yeah. can I share this? Is this, you know, is this for me? Because those are, those are the important questions that um, keep us in conversation with him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I too, in my own personal creative adventures, I found myself, you know, processing cause we're all, we're all processing through a lot of trauma right now, whether we realize it or not. Right. Like what yes. is going on? And I find myself having a lot of interesting prayerful conversations with God and knowing that like a next step would be to write about it only for my own benefit to process through like the next level of, okay, well, I'm missing community. Well, why let, let me like, cause for me, I process when I write, when I can really prayerfully like get things out. So, and I can see God maybe using that in a later season or developing it in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's been interesting. <laughs> okay. So you just, you just totally 
transitioned into my next thing I want to talk to you about. There is a lot of trauma in this season and a lot of people are working through how they manage that trauma. Um, You know, some people, I mean, numbing ourselves can look very different, you know, numbing ourselves can be, I'm going to do five workouts every day. You know, (laughs) that's not me. (laughs) Not are me. you are you going well walking? I know you love walking. Are you still doing that? I do love walking, but I, I started doing some other um anyway. That's I am getting <laughs> exercise. Good. Good. But because um suffering hurts and trauma is painful emotionally, our natural bend is to numb ourselves towards it somehow. Yeah. Um I put a, a screen time calculator on my pantry door just like a little log sheet? Yeah. Oh, cool. How much time I spend in the pantry. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. I thought you meant like logging how long you're on the internet. I'm like, you know, your phone can do that for you. But that makes more sense. All right. We're logging yeah, the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I was so, just here um, five minutes ago. <laughs> Dang yeah. it. So one of the things that you, you have a new book that's coming out. Yeah. Oh. And it's my favorite topic. It's just yeah, getting to know God's voice. Um, I'm super excited about it. And I hope you all will connect with Jenny um, and look for this book launch when it comes out. But the way that you described it to me, Jenny, was um, our unhealthy response to suffering. Because h- how we hear God's voice And I don't think a lot of people really bring this up, but I think it's huge, especially in this season, how we hear God's voice can sound different in a traumatic season or a traumatic under traumatic circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So the book isn't just about suffering, but it does in the middle part of the book, it talks about the things that can hinder us from hearing his voice. So one of the chapters was on suffering. And when I was filling out your super organized questionnaire to come hang out with you, I I thought of that chapter, obviously, because we're all in a season of like, what? Um, and I had this really profound experience in college. I produced a TV show, a Christian TV show, and we would go out into the community. This was in Ithaca, New York, we'd go out into the community and we would just interview random people on the street. And we saw this one guy. So we went over with our microphone and we're like, can we ask you a question? And he's like, what's it going to be about? And and we're like, church. And he said, okay, but you could tell like something was going on because you could see he's processing and he got watery eyed. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm rolling the camera. And the TV host said, "Um, when's the last time you've been to church? And He said, I used to be a pastor, but my daughter died and I haven't talked to God ever since. No. I know. And I'm going to cry. I know. And I was in that moment and I wish, I wish I looked in his kind eyes and was like, you know what? God can handle your suffering. God can handle your pain. I honestly don't even remember how we ended the conversation. I know I didn't say all that magical stuff, but it really showed me like when we're facing suffering, we miss out on God's voice when we're not running to him, right? When we isolate, when we pull back, because there there's, I had questions. Well, why God, why did you, what, what's going on with her daughter? Like there's so many, what ifs we can walk through in suffering and we might not always get the answers to that. And I don't want that reason to be a reason we stop asking God the questions, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's and, a chapter and, in my book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think it's interesting um, that you brought that up because you know that um, my husband and I just walked through a season of cancer, and we are we are deeply, deeply grateful that God has healed him from that, um, which has created a passion in me to pray for other cancer victims, um, not victims, but people who are are suffering with that. Yeah. In the middle of that season, I had um, a moment where I went to the Lord because we had determined and just in day one that we were going to go after everything that God had for us 
in that season because we believe that problems come with upgrades. They come with promises. And we know the promises on our life and on our marriage. Um, and this, this wasn't in line with the promises. But I, I said to God one day, I was, I was just a mess. I just felt like I was screwing everything up. I couldn't keep, um, you know, all my little balls in the air. And with, with all my heart in a, in a voice I'd never heard before, I heard the Lord speak to my heart and he said, I didn't ask you to do this gracefully. Mm. I just asked you to do it. And, you know, I think, I think we put expectations on ourselves for, you know, well, we need to keep a stiff upper lip or, you know, I, I need to, we, we just, even in this season, you know, we, we go on social media and we see like, oh, this person's doing that and this person's doing that and, and I'm not doing anything. And well, like you said a minute ago, like maybe this is your season just to be. Yeah. I think we forget that God is inviting us to take his grace <laughs> and not only extend it to other people, but also ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. All he wants is communion with us. All he wants is an intimate relationship. And he doesn't put any of these qualifiers on like we do when we're dating or when we're like looking for a spouse. <laughs> He's just like, no, I love you. I, I just love you. If we, I mean, I love what you just shared about what he spoke to your heart because it's like, I don't, I don't think you can ever prepare for a season of cancer. I, I don't think our humanity could have ever prepared for a season of COVID-19. Like, you know, it's in those reasons, in this brokenness, we learn to rely on Jesus. And that's the whole thing. Like if, if you're facing suffering and you're not even looking to him, if you're not even asking the hard questions, who cares if he gives you a response? Sometimes his response is just be with me. Like you were saying, like, and I think it's so, I just love what you shared. Because oftentimes there, there isn't a response except just show up. Yeah. And don't, don't put expectations on things. You know, I can't, I can't be a Pinterest mom to my kids right now. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, I'm not putting that expectation up there. <laughs> I was sending my daughter resources. She homeschools anyway, but you know, there's just tons of, of homeschool resources. So I was emailing her like one thing every day and um, we got talking and she goes, it's not that I don't want it. She said, but I have stacks of stuff. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, yeah. you don't need any more. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting because my mom's doing similar things and it's the way she's serving us right now, you know? So like for you, you're like, oh, I'm giving, I'm helping, I'm serving. And it's like, oh, another thing I have to do. And it's just, <laughs> but the, the heart behind it is obviously genuine and kind. So yes. <laughs> I love that. So let's talk about um, your story a little bit because I know you address a lot of your story in your book because I got to sneak peek at some of it that you sent me. And, um, you know, I, I love words and I, and I love you. You are just a, a master of words. And you wrote this to me. You said, it's time to stop ghosting the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And amen. I got saved at 18. And it was a very um, Pentecostal church. And for years and years and years and years, I went on this discovery of what does it look like to have a healthy theology, not for just for myself, but for a church as a whole. What does it look like to have a healthy theology of the Holy Spirit? And there were different church environments that would manipulate the move of God because that's what the norm was there, right? Like, Oh, if they're not, if they don't feel it that day, God must have not shown up. Um, and then there were some church environments that weren't even like discussing Holy Spirit at all. And I saw this unhealthy, like, well, what is, what is, how do we get to this biblical based theology of walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, understanding that he moves in us and through us? And what does that look like? So, yeah, I think a lot of, um, and it was it was interesting writing the book because 
we would have the most fascinating conversations because my theological editor would be like, well, that person's not talking about the Holy Spirit, but yet the Holy Spirit's still moving through them. So what's the language for that? So we, you know, it was very interesting. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I'm excited for the book to come out. It comes out in October. Uh, this is my first interview about it. So my gosh. Ooh, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, for me, I, you know, I grew up in a mainline denomination church and there was a two person Trinity. Apparently we couldn't count. <laughs> <laughs> was it father and the son? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they just didn't, they just didn't talk about Holy spirit. Yeah. Um, it was sort of this, addendum, I guess, to the, to the doctrine. And so I always um, was striving, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't right. have, I didn't have the power that Jesus had promised. And it's very clear in the gospels that, that he promised Holy Spirit, the helper, the comforter, the teacher, um, the one who leads us in everything and in all truth. And so for me, Discovering Holy Spirit and, and getting connected, I, I say meeting Holy Spirit, was such a, a game changer for me. And so I really am drawn to the places where people are ghosting Holy Spirit. Um, because I, I just want to say things like, how's that working for you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it takes one, like, Holy Spirit calls you out on sin, and you're like, me, I'm not going to respond. And it's like, one little thing of that. And then the next thing you're ghosting them again, because it's hard. It's hard to be repentant, right? Like it's hard to acknowledge when you, you're not doing it right. Um, mm. Yeah, no, I totally, I get it. Yeah. And that's one of the things in the middle. So in the middle of the book talks about all the things we do to ghost him. And obviously um, suffering can be something that gets in the way of hearing God's voice. And then sin is another thing too, where we, it's too hard to hear. And we just stop listening and responding. So, yeah. Yeah. But there's the good, the good part of understanding the Holy Spirit and embracing who he is. And like, I think we go, can go through, there's some denominations. It's hard, it's hard to talk about without like naming denominations, right? But there's some denominations that are really gifted at understanding the fruits of the Spirit. And then it just stops right there. Um, and then there's some that, are really great at demonstrating the Holy Spirit moving through them and what that's like and, and miracle miracles and signs and wonders, but then they're not demonstrating the fruits of the spirit. So I, I found it fascinating digging into the theology of the Holy Spirit and like what it what is what does it look like, man? And I think it's I, I think the Holy Spirit is one of the um I'm gonna say this. And I don't think it's like, I don't, I think he's one of the most underestimated things in the Christian religion. And it makes me really angry. It makes me really angry. And especially in this season, like, how are we not, how are we not embracing the power God has for us? How are we not like demonstrating kindness to our neighbors? How are we not responding in repentance in areas that God's like calling us to like our, are we, are we kidding? Like, what <laughs> do we even know Jesus? Like, so <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm excited for this book and resource to come out. I'm also scared. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Well, I think it's going to be amazing. I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm going to throw up your website up here so that people can get a hold of you. There we are. Find Jenny. Thank you. Yeah, freedomcreatives.com. And then, um, yeah. And you also have some other stuff. Like you have um, you have a devotional that you send out for women primarily. Yeah, I do free devotionals every Wednesday called Freedom Devotionals. And you mm -hmm. can sign up on my website. And then I have some other free resources, um, a quiz, uh, What's Killing Your Creativity. So if you're a creative person and you want to check, or you're not a creative person, you should check that out. And um, I actually don't, this is embarrassing. I don't have information about getting to know God's voice on there yet, but to be coming soon. So that's my book that comes out in October. Can we mention your podcast? Oh, sure. Yeah. 
I make a podcast with my friend Candace Payne. Some people know her as Chewbacca Mom. And our podcast is called Shut the Should Up. And we talk, we help people find freedom from the things they tell themselves they should and should not do. Awesome. And it's an, yeah. an amazing podcast. And of course, with you and Candace together. <laughs> You know what the most comments we get from listeners is I laughed and then I cried and then I laughed again. Like that's the common theme of, from our listeners. So it makes me really happy. I believe it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, honey, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Um, Can we pray Lord. for the people? Well, I was going to ask you to pray. Oh, yeah. Why Are don't we do a prayer? party prayer? Party pants. Why don't we both pray? What's happening? Nothing. I was just going to see if there was anything else in there okay. um, in the comments. All right, guys, we want to pray for you. If you have anything specific, you can write it down. Um, but I'll just kick us off. And then, Anne, if you want to pray too, you can. If not, you can just close yeah. it up. You start. I'll finish. Cool. All right, God, I just thank you for uh, Anne and her ministry and how you've used her in my own life, Lord. Um, she's such a beautiful example. And I love how she raises up the younger generation. She raises up leaders. Sorry, I'm just going to prophesy over you for a second. I just love how she raises up leaders, God, and she speaks truth over their identity. I just feel like God's going to be shifting you to a greater season and of um, raising up leaders and speaking <laughs> truth to, to their identity. And I almost feel like he's putting you in the marketplace, like he's putting you in secular spaces. Um, you can pray about that. But you're, you're, he's putting you, positioning you in their intentionally just to speak to their identity and to speak truth into their weaknesses. And obviously the love of Jesus will come from that. Um, and anybody else listening or watching, God, we just lift them up to you too. Mm -hmm. And I just pray for the creative adventures you put on their heart, Lord. I pray you show them what season they're in, whether it's a season of resting and getting to know you and it's more of a private season or whether it's a season of educating others or encouraging others through the creative things you've invited them to create. God, I just pray over them that you give them wisdom, you give them a passion in their heart to, to create the things you've invited them to and you give them uh, a boldness. And they know that in the areas they're not equipped, you equip them, God, the areas that they're not resourced. I, I, I pray that they begin to trust that you're going to resource them. Even if they can't see the end game on this, I pray for uh, a building of their faith right now in the name of Jesus. I see somebody watching um, is a writer and you've, I see you writing like, um, I don't even know what the word is, um, like young adult <laughs> fiction. What is fiction? I don't know. But I see you writing that. And I just pray for, um, I see God giving you supernatural wisdom in this season. I see like chapters coming together super easily for you. And it's like this favor uh, is upon you in this season. And I just, I encourage you to keep showing up and keep writing. And if that word is specifically for you, I want you to uh, write in the comments, Hey, that's for me. Cause I'd love to pray for you by name. And, um, yeah, we thank you for that person, God. And I just pray over uh, anybody else that watches, Lord, if they're in a season of suffering themselves and they found it best to isolate because the questions are too hard, if they find it best to uh, pull away from you, God, because the unknown, it just hurts too much. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they begin to feel your love in a way they've never felt before. Mm. Holy Spirit, I pray that they just begin to feel your peace in a way they haven't in a long, long time. Holy Spirit, in, in the areas they felt were silent from you, God, I just pray you begin to whisper truth into their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. And Father, I just um, I pray for the hearts of each person listening, man, woman, young adult. Um, I just I pray for their hearts that they would begin to. Um, I just I see sorting going on, and I would just pray that you would um, begin to sort out like what's working and what's not working and why. And I feel like um, the Lord wants to exchange some things that aren't working. So. You know, negative thinking isn't working and yeah. negative self thinking isn't working. Um, I just invite you to exchange for Jesus's truth about that. Um, things you don't like about yourself, frustration, frustrating habits, 
um, just bring them to Jesus, ask him what he has in exchange for those. Father, we just release greater levels of identity um, over each person in this season that you would draw them to you for the sole purpose of just being together. And that from that place that you would begin to burst new things. We just um, bind and break off any tension, any comparison, any striving in Jesus' name. And we just release complete grace, complete grace in Jesus' name. Um, Father, I bless what you're doing in Jenny and through her. I bless her marriage with Matt, um, that as a couple, that they would they um, they would soar. That just seems to be the word for me today, is they would <laughs> soar yeah. together. And, um, and I bless their children, that there's no junior Holy Spirit. And we bless the, her, their children um, to, to walk in the fullness, the full measure of Holy Spirit, the full measure of Jesus for them, that they too would begin to see visions and dream dreams. They would begin to walk in signs and wonders for the purpose of expanding God's kingdom. Um, we bless their hearts. We bless their hearts with um, just a, an innocence in their relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Father God, we love you so much. And we just um, give you all the glory and the honor and the praise for letting your word and your truth go out over the airways. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Hey, if you were blessed by Jenny, um, if you're watching live or watching the recording, um, would you would you just say, I love you, Jenny? <laughs> Reach Aww. out and friend her. Blow up her Facebook feed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So sweet. This was fun. This was fun. So um, we're just going to say good night, and we love you, and I will see you next week on Simple Truths. Um, having great conversation.